Hello everybody, welcome back to Dwarf Fortress with Timo. Uh, I'm going to do another tutorial tonight. Uh, this one is going to be uh, advanced quantum stockpiles. So I did another quantum stockpile tutorial. It was pretty simple just how to set it up. Uh, tonight I'm going to show you a lot more use on what you could do with these uh, and how helpful they are beyond just the uh, helping with your frames per second, but actually organization of your, your overall fort. Uh, so you can see here I've built some, some quantum stockpiles. Um, a simple one I'm going to go over right now is just uh, how I've set up my stone. So let me get rid of my military squad here and show you. I've got this stockpile coming in here. And I've got metal ores coming in here, all of them. For economics, I've got calcite, chalk, dolomite, limestone, marble. Those are the five uh, what are called flux stones. You need those for producing steel. Uh, to produce steel, you take uh, an iron bar and a flux, and you make a pig iron out of it. And then you take a pig iron and a flux and an iron, and you make a steel out of it. So there's a lot of flux, uh, a lot of iron that needs to go into it. Um, and then you also need, if you're not working with magma, you need fuel throughout the, all those those steps. So um, another thing, when you I, I've gone in and shown you the custom I've shown you um, a stockpile every time you look at a stockpile like that you need to come back and check the barrel section with quantum stockpiles you're awfully turning off and turning everything off uh, with this because it's a stone stockpile I actually leave five wheel barrels on there so they could go pick up the heavy stones and bring it here which is fine but I will show you in a second for these outputs of the of the quantum stockpiles you see I got the little mine carts going to the outputs I'll look at this one first. So here I just have my five um, flux stones. And this the wheelbarrow selection had on the filter is going to have the exact same thing as the stockpile. So although the overall stockpile is taking all your metal ores and all your flux stones, it's only putting the flux stones in this one. Now since I looked at the custom settings, I need to come in here and turn that wheelbarrow back off so I don't fill up the wheelbarrow here and have that sitting there instead of the stones. Um, so now what happens is I could just mouse over this and immediately see up at the top middle here, come up right here, how many flux stones I have. Now I could visually see that there's none there. But if I just had, if I had some there, it would just show the one symbol, but I can mouse over it and see a whole list. Like on this, this next one, which is my metal ores, I mouse over that. You can see I've got the, the copper nuggets. i got the, the galena. I've got more copper nuggets, gold nuggets. So I can go ahead and start um, melting all of those down. Um, and you would see a lot more in here. I think I've got uh, hematite and tetrahedrite, but I've, I'm caught up on those. So that's why you don't see any of them in here. I don't really care about the copper nuggets because I'm past copper in this fortress. Um, so it's just a quick mouse over you can easily see. Now I've done the same thing over here. Here's with a bar stockpile. So I bring all the bars into this and then I've got four different selections for my bars. So I've got steel bars as my first one. Um, and I'll go ahead and just show you that one, but I'm not going to go into all four just to save a little bit of time. So I go into custom here. I got metal bars, bars metal, and the only one I have selected is steel. Everything else is turned off. The only thing I, I'm going to put in this one is steel bars. Come back in here, get rid of the bin. Because I had to go to the custom settings, it automatically puts a bin back. I wanted to take it back off. Hopefully they'll change, they'll fix that bug that doesn't change your settings after you go back into it again, but right now it does. So if you want to go look at your stockpile settings, remember to go back there and turn stuff back off, especially with the quantum stockpiles. So now that I've got it, it filtered, I can just mouse over and see how many steel bars I got. And then the next one I have is my pig iron bars, iron bars, I got a bunch of those. So I'm way behind on making steel from iron to pig iron to steel, and it's because I'm, I'm out of flux. So this map for me has been really low on flux. Most of my flux has come from trading. So I'll basically get a big batch of, of flux in. They'll take, they'll take it down here. And then they'll start um, moving the iron bars into pig iron and the pig iron into steel. I've got some um, jobs set up so it kind of does that automatically as soon as I have the resources show up. Um, but again, it allows me to just mouse over. You can see this one is just all my catch-all. So I've got a bunch of copper bars and silver bars in here that for the most part I don't use too much. The silver bars are great for war, uh, war hammers. Um, I would really recommend doing that uh, for your war hammers is making it out of silver. 
uh, because you don't have a lot of other use that silver is good for, but it's great for the hammers. Um, copper is kind of your basic start if you don't have early access to iron. If you have early access to iron, I would recommend just skipping copper and going straight to iron because iron is a lot better. But sometimes you can't get iron early in a map. And in this map particularly, it took me a while to find iron levels. So I had built uh, a lot of copper. And you can see mousing over here. I've got a lot of copper stuff that's kind of left over that I haven't melted back down yet. All right, getting over to my armor and weapon stockpile. So the first thing I have... I'll go into the settings on this. I have a custom stockpile. The chest has all armor and weapons coming in here of all types. There's, there's everything can come in here of those two types. I'm going to want to come back in here and get rid of all the bins that it brought back. All right. Um, now I've got three outputs here. Uh, the first thing I'm going to look at is this one right here. So I, I separate out just my picks. So it's a, it's a weapon stockpile because on the weapons, I have everything's turned off except for picks. Um, and then I want everything, all the rest of these selections down here are green because I don't care what kind of pick it is. So I have metal picks, stone picks, other materials, no matter what the quality, all of it, all the picks go into here. Again, I came out of that. I want to take off the bin. Um, and then after I put, put all the picks over here, these other two outputs, I have picks turned off. But what I've filtered on instead is the core, uh, I guess it's actually, is it total quality or core quality? I believe I did total quality. So if I click on this, go to custom, I've got armor and weapons coming in here of all types, but it's core quality. I, I turned off masterwork and artifact. So it's all the lower uh, quality ones are coming over here. Um, core quality on an item is kind of like what the base item is made at. And then there's ways to improve the item beyond its base characteristics, like say you encrust it or, or do some other stuff to it. So if you add stuff to it, then a total quality will be added. So their core quality is just that base item. And that's what I care about. Um, so I turned off Masterwork and Artifact from this one. And let me get rid of that bin. Oh, and then I'll show you, I'll show you on this one because I forgot to show you here. So on this one, again, it's armor and weapons but the core quality is just masterwork and artifact. And if I come over to weapons, actually, you can see that on weapons it's gray, and it's because the only thing I've turned off on picks. It's the same thing on the other one, is I've turned off just picks on the other one, too. So what that means is that, uh, and, and the same filter applies to the, uh, the wheelbarrows. So it, it takes all the picks and puts them here, no matter what the quality. And if it's not a pick, and it's masterwork or artifact, it puts it here. If it's anything less, it puts it over here. Now, what you the reason I do that is because although for copper and, and iron, I don't really care too much. I just make sets for everybody. When I get to steel, I'm going to want that to be my last set of armor. And so what I'm going to want to be doing is anything that's not um, masterwork or artifact, I'm going to melt back down and try again until I get it to masterwork or artifact level. So when I, when I get, when they go here... Um, and I'm also not going to equip any of my dwarves with any steel until I've got masterwork everything for everybody. So I'm just producing it. Um, if I get enough for like one set of dwarves, I will create uh, a, a set of armor for them or a, um, a uniform for them with, with steel and, and tell them to go, to, to go look for it. Um, but until I have enough, I'm, I'm not going to bother doing that. But now what I can do, since I have a separate stockpile here of just my non-masterwork and artifact, I can come into this menu down here and do designated item for melting. And this allows me to draw a box over this, and I just told them to melt the entire stack down. So it saves you a lot of time and effort and dealing with menus and selecting individual th things. I can now just melt that whole stack with a couple of button clicks. I don't want to do that in this fort right now. Uh, so I'm just going to take that back off. But that's the simplicity you have for melting stuff back down and getting it to masterwork. Um, when you're getting more advanced and want to equip your dwarves with better gear, you want to get everything to the masterwork level or above. Uh, so that's a simple way to do it. Now you saw for the stone stockpile, I actually had just the metals and the, the flux. If I go up to my uh, level or where my, my stone workers are, you can see that I've got another stone here. Um, 
stockpile. And here at this stockpile, I've got everything else. So I've got the economic that's not flux, and then I got other stones and clay are all coming up here uh, because this is where my stone workers are. The, the metals and the flux were way down deep in my fortress down by the lava so I can have magma smelters and magma forges going. And I've actually got a burrows down there and there's um, there's beds for the people down there. It's got its own dining hall. It's got its own temple. It's got uh, foods and drink stockpiles that, that gather from my... So the dwarves that are down there and stationed down there, I can burrow them there and they don't need to go anywhere else. They've got everything they, they need to keep themselves happy. Um, now, this fortress itself has gotten a little bit behind with logistics. You can see that there's these, this huge stockpile here. So what I did there, um, which is kind of neat, is that so I've got, I had my quantum stockpile set up with a 10 to 1. Another thing, you may have seen other videos with uh, quantum stockpiles where it's just a 1 to 1. That's not good design, especially for ores that are heavy and you want a lot of people um, run into it because the bigger the stockpile is the more people can be doing that job at the same time if it's a one-to-one -one, then only one person can bring uh, an item here and drop it off and then move it over and then one more person can do it if you have a more space then more dwarves can be hauling to the feeder stockpile at the same time and then they can shove them all in into the, the over, into the the individual um, output of the, the quantum stockpile. Now I got so far behind that I needed more dwarves to help out with, with stone. So what I did is I created just another, it's, it's going to be a temporary stockpile of stone right here, and I told this stockpile that it could take from this stockpile. So it just allows more dwarves, and it, and it allows me to assign a lot more wheelbarrows. I think I have 10 wheelbarrows assigned to this, and another 2 assigned to this. I brought it down from from four to two. So these two wheelbarrows will eventually go away uh, as well and they'll be replaced with stone. And so it just allows me to catch up a little bit um, eventually if I let this run. Um, and then when I catch up, I can just take the stockpile and delete it and I'm back to the same quantum stockpile I was before. So this is just a temporary one to kind of help, help more dwarves uh, help out with that specific job. I had been doing a lot of digging and there's just a lot of stone in my fortress I had to catch back up on. Uh, you can do these these filters all over the place. This was actually, uh, here's my old bars and blocks. Uh, so this is where I used to have all my um, smiths and, and, and forges up here um, and smelters. Uh, but that was back when I was using charcoal and coke to do it. And so I had an output here of all my charcoal and coke. And then I had just my stone blocks. And then this was just my metal bars. I'm down to just like... Is that three gold bars or something like that? And there's a couple of bins somehow got stuck in there. I don't know what happened with that. I bet you I clicked on it and forgot to go back and turn it off. If I were to guess, actually. Let's see. No, I don't, I don't know what happened. I, I don't know why. But, um, so it's, it's got uh, just a few gold bars left. I've been turning gold bars into statues. Um, and then this is just all my stone blocks. I produce quite a lot of those because it's just more efficient. And so again, it's just, it's quick mouse overs. I'm, I'm not producing really any charcoal or coke anymore because I'm, I don't need the fuel anymore because I'm, I'm working with the magma. But that's what you could do. You can do other stuff. Like I haven't done it with my furniture and produced goods, but if I wanted to, I can like uh, do one for say doors and chairs and tables. You can actually build a whole bunch of different things that you produce. And then instead of going to the stocks menu and being real uh, slow with it, you could easily just come to your, your stockpile and just mouse around and see how much you have of stuff, uh, see what you want to produce. Um, so it's, it gives a lot better uh, interface for knowing what you have available with just a, a quick mouse over and, and visual. Uh, it's a lot faster to, to give you information back for yourself. Uh, obviously, you can be very creative with this. Um, and you can do stuff like um, have um, a filter here, like say you want to make a very specific type of um, production with different colors of stones. You can have um, like a, a workshop, if I come into to workshops right here, um, you could do um, add a, a link for a stockpile for this. So I could make a workshop um, that's producing stones and it's tied to a, an output 
uh, for my quantum sock pile of stones, and I can just have that output be that one type of stone I want to make. And then I have this workshop with just an on repeat task. I could do add a new task and um, rock blocks. I could do rock blocks and I just put this task on repeat. And I have it linked to that output of the one type of stone I want. And then it very simply just makes a whole bunch of rock blocks of the one type of block you want. And you could do that with virtually anything. Um, if you want to have a stockpile for, say, you're, you're making stones and engraving uh, some finished goods, like maybe some furniture or something, you could have a stockpile that's just outputted masterwork furniture or above. And then you could have uh, whoever's doing the encrusting just taking the furniture from that uh, one output to do the encrusting. So again, it, it helps you uh, filter and allow you to, to specify your industry a, a lot better. There's literally anything you can, you can think of um, for filtering down and having efficiency for build by using these kinds of filter strategies with the quantum stockpiles. And again, it's also while you're filtering and making it more efficient for yourself, you're also helping your frames per second fight uh, to not have a frames per second death on your fortress. Uh, if you have any questions, go ahead and toss them after the video. Uh, thanks for watching. Hopefully that was helpful. And uh, we'll see you next time. Have a good night.